Okay, just wanted to do a quick update on the solar powered hydroponic system and some of the changes I've made for this year in order to grow more food with the exact same amount of water and the same amount of space. I've enhanced my system and I just want to go over it real quick in case anybody wants to know exactly how to make one like mine. Okay, so first off, I'm going to start from scratch and we have one solar panel which I'm going to show right now and it's up there on the roof and that's the 100 watt solar panel and in this military box I have two motorcycle batteries that are completely worn out in the sense that they will not start a full-size Harley-Davidson motorcycle anymore but they will easily work for this system. So I have the wires crisscrossed. It's it's red to red. It's not in series, it's in parallel. So <clears throat> I also have an Optimate charger hooked up to it. And the reason why I did this is because last year the pumps would die in the middle of the night. The batteries I was using did not have that many amp hours. A lot of people wouldn't have that problem with like a car battery or a deep cycle battery or any other kind of bigger battery but since they were motorcycle batteries about halfway through the night the pump would start to die out and it would suck the batteries all the way down to nothing. When the morning would come and the sun would come out it would recharge them again so the pump would pump good in the day but it wouldn't pump at night. So even though this system will fully run on solar and be okay as of now I put the genius charger on a timer so what that is over there is a timer and as soon as it gets dark later on in the evening this will actually kick on the trickle charger and then it'll come on and it won't interfere with anything it just makes sure when if those batteries dip below a certain voltage it'll keep the voltage up through the night and again it doesn't have to use that anymore because these batteries are much better than the ones I was using that were really old but I'd rather these batteries last for a long time and I'm not on a full off-grid situation right now so I'm not exactly worried about using my electrical power it's more of just proving that the solar panel the solar system works so I know that was an elaborate explanation for that but it's very easy to do and these are again two 12 volt Harley Davidson batteries um, which are pretty big the the part number is YIX 30L that's the UASA number there's a 30L 30LBS there's a whole bunch of them but I wouldn't buy a new one I would take a used one or prefer some sort of small deep cycle boat battery an old car battery anything that won't crank anything that doesn't have a lot of cranking amps would still work fine for this sort of small pump it's a small 12 volt uh, electric pump so moving on I'm gonna close that out to the back up to the charge controller and this is a very inexpensive charge controller it was like 20 bucks as you, you can set how much voltage you want to come in I'm not sure if you can actually see it because of the glare but it's coming in at 14 volts right now and you can see it shows that the batteries are fully charged and that's from the solar panel and from there we go to the batteries and then the batteries are hooked up to the pump so in here our reservoir we have the pump which is that 12 volt pump I also have two bubblers going for more oxygen. In a system like this, it's again not necessary, but I prefer to run the bubblers like you would in a deep water system because it's just better. Just more oxygen is better for the roots. So we have a bubbler in there and we have this reservoir. And at the bottom is the 12 volt pump. And the change in this design has been very helpful because before we had this cable running all the way over here 
So it had to pump everything back that way and it was just working against itself. So what I did was, this was my original pipe that ran across and the hole for the pump was right there. As you can see how far away it was, is having to work all the way uphill and then trickle the water back down. I just doubled it up. I added a U and I raised these blocks here. So this portion is higher than this portion, obviously. And the water's coming in on the far end, which is directly above the PVC pipe. Extremely simple, extremely simple. See, when I pull it out, you can see the roots there, how, how long they're growing for that lettuce. You should be able to see the water coming in and there, and that it's not very deep. It's only about a half inch deep of water right now, and at nighttime, when the power trickles down a little bit, it's probably half of that. But it's totally fine because that's considered an NFT system. When the roots grow, they reach down and they will, they will go into the water, which again, it's not required to have a bubbler for that. Now on this side, because of the placement of it, it's much deeper. So what I do is I start my young ones over here so their roots are sitting down in the water, into the deeper water. And when they get long enough, I will move them over to this side. That's what I've done so far. It's actually worked incredibly well. As you can see, we have a lot of lettuce growing. Also young ones, you can see there. Those are some strawberries, <clears throat> which it's kind of silly, but it's been they've been growing quite a bit. But strawberries go through these cycles where they, they shed off and then they grow fruit and then they'll just keep starting over. As you can see this one here, it's completely starting over with a bunch of small leaves. So in a couple weeks or so, we'll have more strawberries in there. We got some kale right there. Um, this is butter lettuce, salanova. Salanova, and a ton of romaine, red romaine, coastal star romaine, romaine. It seems to be one of the best growing lettuces for this solar powered system. So real quickly, I want to show you guys how I've been starting these. Um, this is a hex, it's like a Jiffy something hex seed starter, and it's like my favorite one. I've used a lot of different styles. Um, what it is, is you got water on the bottom, which is kind of almost like hydroponics, and it's got hole right here, and you fill it up with the seed starter soil, and then the water on the bottom absorbs up. As you can see, all these soils are very moist. So I've had really good luck with these ones because I'll start a whole bunch of lettuces or whatever in the one area. And then I can actually, instead of having to just pluck off the ones that aren't as strong, I can actually pull them out of the soil. Once, they're, once their roots grow down into there, they'll reach and they'll be nice and long and I can just separate them. Sometimes two or three lettuces will be in one of these pods and I can actually separate them. Then I use the hose and then I rinse, I will rinse off all the, whoops, not with that one, but I will rinse off all the dirt and stuff. And then a lot of times if the roots aren't long enough, I will put them in a little bit of rock wool. I will use, So this would be the kind of rock wool piece I would use when the roots are still very young. So what I would do is rinse off all the dirt once they get the roots get about this long. And then I would wrap this around the main part of the plant 
soak it in water so it's covered in water and then hold this down into one of those net cups like one of these hold it down in there and then surround it with those clay pebbles and that way it still if it's in the early stages this rock wool will keep the roots moist enough for them not to dry out now if the roots are long enough a lot of times I will cut the bottom out right there just a piece of it bend it down and then pull the roots through the bottom just so they can barely touch the water and they will wick here's a perfect example as you can see the bottom there has been pulled out this is also a young red romaine that I started probably about a week ago. I moved it over about a week ago and look at the root already just growing super deep down there. So I could easily move this one over to this side now if need be, which I really don't need to right now because all the ones over here, all the roots are looking good now at this point. So at first it's a little tricky to have to shuffle them back and forth I drilled more holes in this one because it was the second one. Had I planned this better originally, I would have drilled a lot more holes on this side, being that it's the starter, or at least the same number, and then moved them over. But this was my first one, my experimental, and I didn't feel like breaking the whole entire thing down to start from scratch when I added the second half, which I could have, but I didn't want to have to drill and get all the plastic in the water and all that. So. That's where we're at. So we're gonna put that guy back. And this is a kale that's about two weeks old. The length of the roots on that one. And the water right there on that corner is very low. That's less than, that's like maybe 10 millimeters. But it's still working great. So, yeah, so that's it. That's. That's the update of my solar-powered hydroponic system. I'm also growing a variety of different lettuces in the dirt. Those are the same coastal star romains. More strawberries, organic strawberry plants here. From this one strawberry plant, I've multiplied, I have over 10 strawberry plants from the runners. That's one of the coolest things you can do. One strawberry plant will grow you strawberries for life. Those are some spinaches, as you can see. Different lettuce, also in dirt. I found that the Salanova likes to grow in the dirt much better. It gets very compact, very compact in the pipe. As you can see, this is, it's very strange. It still tastes good, but it gets these tiny baby leaves and like a million of them stacked up. It's almost like they need to be spread out so they have room to grow. So I've decided I won't be doing Salanova in the hydroponic anymore. At least this particular butter leaf Salanova. I'm going to try some of the different type of Salanova in here maybe, but I've just started a bunch of of those Salanova, they'll all be growing in their own individual two, I think it's a two and a half gallon small pot like that. I like that one. And just a bunch of those. I had the bigger pots and I have a whole bunch of them, but I found that these smaller ones are pretty much the best for, at least for deck gardening, because you can just move them around. It's just so simple. You can just stack them up and it really utilizes the best amount of space for this. And as you can see, my big giant ones, I used to have them all over the ground and they were just a failure. And then you'd get bugs and the whole thing would be infested. So if you're going to do lettuces, I suggest these smaller ones. One lettuce plant, maybe two per pot. Give it a try. These hanging ones work great for strawberries and for romaine at the top. Or if you have a lot more sunlight, you could do romaine the whole way down. You can see the strawberries are growing great out of these. They don't need much. So, yeah, that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. And stay safe.